Okay, I'll end with that. You do that. We're really focusing on nutrient-rich real foods, but I get what you're saying. It does go hand in hand with food. Get your paper and pen or camera ready for screenshots of real foods that may contribute to the prevention of cancer and disease. But first, we'll quickly go through the one category of foods to avoid that has been proven to cause and contribute towards cancer and diseases. How do you know? There are tons of National Institute of Health studies that talk about this one category of food and its effect on cancer, causing oxidative stress, chronic inflammation. Oxidative stress and chronic inflammation is bad, bad, bad. How bad is it? very bad. Oxidative stress and chronic inflammation can contribute to various health issues and are associated with a decreased lifespan. Oxidative stress can damage cells, protein, and DNA, leading to cellular dysfunction and aging. It is linked to the development of chronic diseases, including cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders, and certain cancers. It contributes to the progression of these diseases and can negatively impact overall health. Here's a quick run through of a few of these studies. Ultra processed foods. So what's first? Association between ultra processed foods and risk of cancer, a systematic review and meta-analysis. The present meta-analysis suggests that high ultra processed foods consumption is associated with a significantly increased risk of certain cancers, especially the digestive tract and some hormone related cancers. Cancers, cancers. Ultra processed foods and cancer risk. From global food systems to individual exposures and mechanisms, the global food system plays an important role by promoting overconsumption of ultra processed foods and through the environmental impact of their production, such as pesticides, pollution, and global warming, which may in turn also increase cancer risk. This study is a bit more interesting as it talks about the global environmental impact, including pollution and global warming caused by the unnecessary food processing. Single ingredient foods are a solution to this unnecessary practice. Good idea. Ultra processed food consumption and cancer risk. In conclusion, the available suggestive evidence shows a consistent significant association between the intake of ultra processed food and the risk of overall and several cancers, including coral rectal, breast, and pancreatic cancers. I have colorectal cancer. I have breast cancer. We got to prevent it. Ultra processed foods and cancer risk. Available evidence suggests that ultra processed foods may increase cancer risk via their obesity causing properties as well as thorough exposure to potentially carcinogenic compounds such as certain food additives and neoformed processing contaminants. It was preventable. There's another one? No, not just another one. Consumption of ultra processed foods and cancer risk. In this large prospective study, a 10% increase in the portion of ultra processed foods more please in the diet was associated with a significant increase of greater than 10 percent in risk of overall and breast cancer what i have terminal breast cancer it is entirely preventable ultra processed foods may increase ovarian and other cancer risks my wife had ovarian cancer so she can't have babies scientists say the consumption of ultra processed foods such as pizza bread and fizzy drinks is linked to greater risk of cancer particularly ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. Let's make cancer feel foolish. Ultra processed food consumption and the risk of pancreatic cancer. I have pancreatic cancer. In the prostate, lung, coral rectal, and ovarian cancer screening trial. High consumption of ultra processed foods was found to be associated with an increased risk of pancreatic cancer. It's preventative measure. So what's our solution? Single ingredient. Food. Last one ultra processed foods and risk of head and neck cancer in European perspective investigative into cancer and nutrition study, a meditation analysis. We reaffirmed that higher ultra processed food consumption is associated with greater risk of head and neck cancer. What's the solution? Glorious food. Single ingredient foods are not ultra processed foods. That's the no nonsense, easy way to increase longevity. Now let's create our single ingredient food grocery list. And by the way, we have an added food related longevity tip at the end. Yay! These are nutrient rich foods that have anti cancer and anti disease properties. Sometimes there is a category of a type of food, for example, nuts. We'll talk about the nuts with the highest level of nutrients, but that doesn't mean that other nuts aren't also great to eat. Yay! 
When it comes to real food, variety is the spice of life, according to a National Institute of Health study. Greater health food food variety, as measured by the U.S. Healthy Food Index, is associated with lower odds of metabolic syndrome and its components in U.S. adults. Greater health food food variety was associated with lower odds of metabolic syndrome. The selected real foods are on the list because they are anti-cancer and anti-disease foods. Many are rich in antioxidants, which neutralize free radicals by donating electrons, helping to reduce oxidative stress and prevent cellular damage. Many are rich in polyphenols that have anti-inflammatory properties, helping to reduce chronic inflammation, which is associated with various age-related diseases. Chronic inflammation is considered a factor in the aging process, and by mitigating it, polyphenols may contribute to longevity. Some polyphenols have been studied for the potential to regulate metabolism and improve insulin sensitivity. Maintaining healthy metabolic function is important for preventing age-related diseases like diabetes. Antioxidants and polyphenols have been shown to modulate immune function and may help the body defend itself against infections and diseases. A robust immune system is crucial for overall health and longevity. Some real foods have flavonoids and polyphenols. By supporting the integrity of genetic material, flavonoids and polyphenols may contribute to overall cellular health. They may help improve blood vessel function, lower blood pressure, and increase the risk of heart disease, ultimately contributing to a longer, healthier life. Antioxidants, flavonoids, and polyphenols may have neuroprotective effects and support brain health. They may help reduce the risk of neurodegenerative diseases, contributing to cognitive function in the aging process. They combat oxidative stress, inflammation, and other cellular damage that may contribute to a lower risk of chronic diseases, such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disorders. Bottom line. Bottom line, we're focusing on real foods that have antioxidants, flavonoids, and polyphenols, and foods that may help reduce oxidative stress, inflammation, and may have anti-cancer effects. They are rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory effects. They are rich in vitamins and minerals with potential anti-cancer properties. That is the general guideline used to create our shopping list. Quick tip, save money by only buying foods on your shopping list. First up, proteins. Chicken, chickpeas, lentils, black are best. Meat, seafood. If you're vegan or vegetarian, you may want to add pea protein. Cost-saving tip. When items are on sale, triple up on those items and freeze them for later use. Also, for hard-to-find items like black lentils, when you see them, buy it in a larger volume. It's usually cheaper per ounce anyway. When cooking the lentils, make a large batch, then portion the extra into baggies with labels and freeze them. So you do your cooking once and then just take the extras out of the freezer as needed. This will give you quick homemade TV dinners. Also, baggies can take up a lot less space than lidded plastic tubs. Next up, our miscellaneous category. Apple cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, salon cinnamon, chili powder, Plus, I do have more than 70 different single ingredient seasonings. That's enough bragging. I use them individually and also create spice combinations from them, like Italian seasoning, Kentucky Fried Chicken seasoning, Thai seasoning, Indian spice combo, Mexican seasoning. I have a bunch. This makes cooking easy and tasty. The reason I don't get pre-made spice combos because they include bad ingredients, plus way too much salt read the labels. Dark chocolate, cocoa flavonoids, extra virgin olive oil, green tea, matcha powder is best. Even if you're not a tea drinker, you can sprinkle the powder on your chia. Yummy. Coconut milk, canned. I use coconut milk because it's high in protein and actually has a neutral taste. For full disclosure, coconut milk actually has two ingredients. Gargum is in canned coconut milk. The canned coconut milk doesn't have all the bad processed items that are in containered coconut milk. Always read the labels. When in season, I sometimes buy whole coconut. Next up, seeds. Chia seeds are great in omega-3, as is flax seed. Tip, when making something that contains chia seeds, Mix the chia seeds and liquid, like coconut milk, first before adding the other ingredients. 
It takes a few minutes for the chia to thicken up, but the thickening process starts right away. That is why you want to give it a mix before adding the other ingredients. Otherwise, the chia will clump up. Flaxseed, ground. You can buy whole flax seeds and then ground them yourself as needed. They do need to be grounded to be digested to have a health benefit. I use my coffee grinder to grind the seeds. Hemp seeds, mustard seeds, pumpkin seeds. I use them in my Young Me homemade granola. Sesame seeds. I get both the light and black sesame seeds. It's fun to sprinkle them on my Asian chicken. It's all in the plating. Hence my Michelin stars. Sunflower seeds, also in my granola and salads. Next up, nuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, only eat less than one a day. I put crushed Brazil nuts in my homemade granola, which equals out to about a fourth Brazil nut per serving. Hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, pecans, pine nuts, pistachios, walnuts. Many of these I use in my granola. Plus, I'll buy more of whatever's on sale. And also, I'll buy other nuts on occasion, especially when they're on sale. Okay, now berries and fruit. You can't go wrong with most berries. Acai berries, blackberries, blueberries. I always have frozen blueberries in my freezer as a backup to the fresh ones for when the fresh ones are not available or extremely overpriced. Caracara oranges, they are hard to find, so sometimes I'll get the blood oranges. Cherries, now when they're in season, the prices really drop. When they're not in season and I can't find them in the market, I usually get really sad and sometimes even cry. But being a solution-oriented person, So, what is the solution? I came up with a solution. Buy a bunch when they're on sale and freeze some. The frozen cherries thaw soft, but I use them in my granola along with other berries, so that works out fine. What? This is your solution? Cranberries, currants, gujo berries, huckleberries, lemon, lime. I have a Thai lime tree. It's fun to cut the fresh leaves to use for when I make my Thai dishes pomegranates. Even the seeds are healthy. This is killing me. Pomelos, raspberries, strawberries. Plus, I do buy other fruit like golden kiwi on occasion. Very high in vitamin C. Now, veggies. Artichoke hearts, I'll get the frozen ones. Read the label, make sure that artichoke hearts are the only ingredient. Arugula, I'll get a big bag freezing half. The frozen half can be used for cooked dishes, and homemade pesto, which I'll also make in a double or triple batch and freeze for later use. Full disclosure, most of the time I double or triple the dish I'm making. Then I put the extra in a baggie with a label into the freezer. This way I only cook less than half the time. Also, make sure to label what you freeze because once it's frozen, it is very difficult to identify. Asparagus, avocado, beets, broccoli, cauliflower. I buy both, the fresh and frozen. The frozen I get is the rice cauliflower, which is just chopped up cauliflower. Read the label to verify it only has one ingredient, cauliflower. Cilantro, fennel, garlic, ginger root, herbs. I have over 70 dried herbs, and like I mentioned, I set up a bunch of different spice combinations. This is a fun and delicious way to make a quick, flavorful meal from single ingredients, like just grilling up a chicken breast and putting it on a salad. Delicious. Jalapeno pepper, mint. That's my mint plant from Greece. Ow! Big screens. Remember, big variety. Radishes. Shallots, shiitake mushrooms. I hate mushrooms, but they're healthy. I don't eat them. They're on the list for you fungi lovers. Plus, they fit our longevity good foods criteria. Spinach, Brussels sprouts, sweet potato. Another anti-gale food is good for you, so it's on the list. Tomatoes, turmeric. I'll buy extra to be frozen. Turmeric can really stain your cutting board and counter. I cut it up first, then freeze it. So the mess is once, and I, I always have some on hand available. Four, two more points. We're down two more points. Let's wait till the end. It can take a few months to get the hang of only buying single ingredient foods. Plus, going through your cupboards and pantry can be mind blowing with the amount of processed, cancer and disease causing foods. Canned soup can be the worst. Read the ingredient labels. Many of the additives in the ingredients are not real foods. They contribute to cancer and diseases, but are allowed to be put in our foods in small amounts. So we're allowed to have in our food small amounts 
of cancer causing stuff. Over time, the small amounts become regular amounts in our bodies, resulting in cancer and disease. Single ingredient foods are an easy way to prevent this. Since we're talking about longevity and food, we'll briefly touch upon reducing your eating window since that may help longevity and may kill cancer cells. In a National Institute of Health study, fasting, intermittent, and periodic fasting, longevity, and disease. In humans, the alteration of fasting and refeeding periods is accompanied by positive effects on risk factors for aging, diabetes, autoimmunity, cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, and cancer. Intermittent and periodic fasting are emerging as safe strategies to affect longevity and health span by acting on cellular aging and disease risk factors while causing no or minor effects. So fasting, however it's done, it really helps. Anyone can take one step at a time towards longevity. What's your first baby step? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.